Welcome to Twisted Monday. We're back once again where it all started. And I've selected for this outing Warthog, one of my least favorite vehicles. But here in the first game, it is also one of the strongest. We saw its story last month. And interpretation of that story, a live-action FMV version, which wasn't in the game. So we know what's going to happen. And, uh, of course, if you don't remember, he's hoping Calypso can help him retrieve an item so powerful it could destroy the world. Ditto the driver of Crimson Fury. Special weapon in this game is called XQJ-37 Hornets. They would later simplify that to Patriot Missiles, which is also more in keeping with the theme of the vehicle. But regardless of name, it would smell as sweet. It is among the more powerful weapons that a vehicle this large has. Normally they balance ridiculously huge vehicles in this game by giving them terrible specials. Not so with Warthog. Also, I didn't point it out before, here's Crimson Fury. Check out the image of Agent Stone on the side there. And there's Darkseid. The image of Mr. Ash is a silhouette of Agent Stone with creepy eyes pasted on. I guess they didn't have the actor in studio yet when they were filming the FMV scenes? I don't know. Because in the videos, Agent Stone is not depicted, and Mr. Ash is. Whatever. It works. Ultimately, the cost-cutting features did get the game on shelves, miraculously enough. So because this vehicle is so strong, I'm going to do something I've never done before. Hard mode. I thought I would never do this on Twisted Metal 1. But this vehicle is so imbalanced, we can still handle it. Unless our first enemy is... Okay, Hammerhead would have killed us. Roadkill should be fine. Let us begin our dominance of the Twisted Metal Tournament. We're going to see how much more likely it is that Warthog collects the item that he and uh, Crimson Fury are battling over. Because Crimson Fury is one of the weakest vehicles in this game or any Twisted Metal game. So Roadkill's almost dead. Not even worried about him. Instead, let's take a good look at Sweet Tooth's image here. It's clearly a parody of the Dirty Dancing poster. Am I right? I'm not the only one who sees that. Like, look up the Dirty Dancing movie poster. It's this. And I don't know why. Obviously, not an ice cream truck. It is two attractive actors instead. But the text and layout is identical. And that's just a bizarre reference. Maybe all of these are movie references. I believe the quote here on Mr. Grimm's Live to Ride, Ride to Kill is a movie quote in some capacity. So maybe these are all cinematic references. And most of them have just gone over my head. And none of them are appropriate, I have to guess. We've crushed Roadkill in like a single hit, and then I just got a very clean hit on him. That did very little, and I don't know why. Rammy damage is super random. But eventually, it'll get us through. See, there it is. Finished him off. Accidentally. Didn't even realize he was there, but I crushed him like a bug. That'll happen when you're a big vehicle. In the Let's Play, I only played as large vehicles because they are, frankly, much, much easier than the small vehicles. So on both of my revisits since the Let's Play, I've chosen uh, small vehicles to show what that's like. And during the Let's Play, I said you have to have incredibly high armor to have even the faintest chance of getting through. So I expected the playthroughs with the smaller vehicles to be virtually impossible. And they're not. They are relatively well-balanced in the fact that they drive so much better 
than the large vehicles. Like, handling is actually surprisingly good among the fast vehicles. If you touch anything, you're done for. But the fast vehicles have the means to avoid touching anything. Believe it or not. Still takes a lot of skill to get anywhere. But not like the unbelievable amounts of skill that I expected it to take. That said, large vehicles are definitely much more fun, much stronger, and more beginner friendly. I don't want to say easier, but if you haven't played as many hours of this game as I have, you will find the large vehicles to be easier. For example, we're on hard mode. I wouldn't dream of playing hard mode with any of the small vehicles. But here I haven't even practiced that much. And I am not terrified. Not by any means. I am dead. But we've got extra lives. Deaths are kind of strategic. They'll refill your inventory. Move you to a better position where you're not getting hounded by whoever killed you. There are good reasons to die sometimes. Although... 50-50 chance that we get through the next level. Virtually no chance that we get through the level beyond that without reloading a password because our lives do not refill between levels. I still consider that a huge design flaw. Because it seems like it has to be a choice. They are able to refill your special between levels. You always start a level with two, no matter how many you finish the previous level with. And of course, they do refill your health bar. It's not your life, your life count. So they can reset numerical values between levels. They simply choose not to do so when it comes to lives. And I don't think that's a good idea. It wasn't until the PS2 that they decided always start with three lives. That's the most fun and the most fair. You get a consistent run every time. So, anytime you get through a level with that character, it is the same challenge. Unless the AI goes berserk, which it sometimes does, but... Typically the same challenge. In some of the PS1 games, they decided to carry your inventory over between levels. And obviously the life count thing. To strange effect that I don't particularly care for. I knew I heard Mr. Krim. That guy spams his special non-stop, and I don't know why. It's not like a spam type special that benefits from firing it everywhere randomly. It benefits from accuracy. But Grim doesn't even try when he's being played by the AI. What he does do is run away constantly and drop road spikes everywhere. Which is what got me there. I could not deal enough damage to take out Pit Viper before she took me out. I was actually going to play as Pit Viper because she's a unique character, only appearing in this game. Changed my mind at the last second because we had seen the story of old Warthog so early on. And Warthog is an institution in every single game. Sandwiched by two enemies who wouldn't let me move, but fortunately the one who was swooping in to take advantage exploded. That was Mr. Grimm. Not anymore. We will need Turbo to escape. Oh, it wasn't Mr. Grimm. Mr. Grimm and uh, Pit Viper have near identical dots on the minimap. 
And apparently Mr. Graham killed me there? I don't know. <laughs> Literally no idea what happened. But it's fine. I expected this. It's hard mode in Twisted Metal 1, a very hard game. So... We just get back into it. Only five passwords in the whole game, at least. In each of them, only five digits. Merciful in that way. Don't have to scroll through an entire page of passwords to find the one I need. Because they all work for every character. We did reset our inventory upon death, so I will have to... Recover some items so that I can kill whoever shows up first. Swerve out of the way and then back into the way to get the collision damage is my general strategy for faster vehicles. Every vehicle is faster than uh, Warthog. It's not the slowest vehicle in the game, but it's so slow that the slower vehicles are effectively the same speed. It ultimately doesn't matter. And get the enemy while they're T-sliding away from you. Excellent time to hit them. I think you're supposed to T-slide into other enemies to deal bonus damage or something like that. It's a surprisingly complicated mechanic that you have no incentive to learn. Because just touching enemies does so much damage. None of it matters. Ultimately, nothing matters. It's all so imbalanced. There's one or two enemies that are relying on a spam of rear fire missiles. Which is, uh, getting me repeatedly. There we go. Just fuse hitboxes without law. Drain all of his health instantly. At the cost of most of my own. We were taking equivalent damage that entire time. So as to just put an end to our fused hitboxes. That seems to be the failsafe that was programmed in. Doesn't really work. Sort of works. In that it does not cause you to completely softlock the game. But it is one of the more obvious flaws in the programming and in the gameplay when you're actually playing the game. There goes another one. Smaller vehicles we can just crush. And even large vehicles, I am not afraid to ram directly into them. But that random collision damage is super weird. I'm not used to it and I never will be. There's our special trio of missiles. They're not colored or anything. They're just white missiles that fire out and then converge on a point near an enemy. Which means they do have pretty solid homing. And that is what makes Warthog arguably better than Sweet Tooth. Statistically, they are near identical. Warthog is probably a little bit faster. But Warthog Special has homing, Sweet Tooth does not. Sweet Tooth does a little more damage, but is much harder to hit with. So Warthog is the better at a range, and effectively the same at close combat. Certainly among the most beginner-friendly vehicles you could possibly choose. Even though I don't really want him to win, he's the villain in the 
Warthog Crimson Fury story. But he is more likely to win. And he's gonna win today. Even on hard mode. He's unstoppable. As soon as Crimson Fury decides to stop wandering around this loop here. Yeah, a, a huge ram. You just play every vehicle the way that you play Darkseid in Twisted Metal Black. Just crash into everybody. And win. They made it a special in Twisted Metal Black because it's so satisfying and fun. On to the first real level. And even this level is fully manageable by every vehicle in the game. I've beaten it deathless with Crimson Fury. <laughs> Darkseid just spinning around in the road. Never seen that before. But I've seen so many strange behaviors, nothing surprises me when it comes to the AI here in Twisted Metal 1. They're clearly more aggressive, but they can only do so much with difficulty in Twisted Metal. They cannot raise the health values nor the damage values of uh, any of the vehicles. Not without it being very conspicuous that they did so. So they don't do that. They just make them behave in a more erratic, aggressive manner. Oil spills absolutely everywhere. Outlaw does not care about the environment. Yeah, that whole alleyway is covered with oil now. We have no need to go down there. Although oil spills, as obstacles go, are not very dangerous. Just want to get these springs out of my inventory. Because they're taking up finite space. And are useless. And now I just want to survive to get to the recharge. Which is not a full health. But it'll keep us going. Yellow Jacket might be the most harmless opponent. Because it is the largest compared to its relatively low armor. So, it makes the most contact when you hit it. And therefore takes the most ramming damage. Or so it seems. You can just sort of scrape against it for as long as you need to, and it typically dies. Gets killed by maybe even a ref there. I've never actually seen an enemy vehicle get killed by a ref, but that might have been what just happened. Sweet Tooth down. Luckily I came out on top when I just rammed him head on. Could have gone either way, quite honestly. Such is the nature of the physics. And Darkseid unwisely taking the ramp. And then I do the same. Could have flipped over there. Now there's no health refills. So... Wait for Darkseid to come around the corner. Throw all these homing missiles at her. Him, in this game. <laughs> so used to Twisted Metal Black. But originally it was driven by Mr. Ash. Surprisingly, I did not get frozen by Darkseid there. Pit Viper has been in almost every level we've played so far. And it is a perfectly adequate middle-of-the-line vehicle. I will have no problem playing as Pit Viper when I do choose to do so. Just not this week, but probably next time I pick up uh, Twisted Metal 1. It'll be as Pit Viper. Double kill. Worth it, because there's only two enemies left. Mr. Grimm and Pit Viper. 
by the time any of them do any real damage, I should have the recharge stations back up. I hope. But that also feels very random. I've not discovered consistent rules as to when recharge stations recharge, for lack of a better word. And Mr. Grimm is actually kind of dangerous when you are at low health and when he is not the only remaining enemy. Actually, even when he is the only remaining enemy. On hard mode, Mr. Grimm can actually hit you. And when Mr. Grimm can hit you, you can die instantly. His special is the highest damage single attack in the whole game. So I'm gonna at least get a bunch of weapons for the next encounter I have. Not gonna rely on ramming, because it will cost me as much as it costs the enemy. Which might be lethal at this point. Okay. Here comes Mr. Grimm, surprisingly. Almost took him out one hit. Now, wandering around is also punished in this game by the refs. They will shoot you with missiles the entire time you do the lap around the course. So it's a no-win situation. Playing the game is designed to kill you. Touching walls is guaranteed to kill you eventually. It's a needlessly deadly game. I guess the point is that it is deadly. It's the whole controversy and the whole reason Calypso likes it so much. Now you'll note, recharge stations still have not recovered. I still cannot get my health back. Even as long as it's been. There we go. Tapped a wall and blew myself up. That happens surprisingly often. Rude food is where I crashed finally. So now I can play more aggressively when I get back in there. Would have done so, but the recharge station simply didn't feel like coming back on. No one wants to work. In the year 2005, where we currently are, in Twisted Metal. The two big enemies are what we want to focus down. Because they're the real threats, quite frankly. You get Dark Side in the side, and ironically, that's uh, what shuts it down. That's the weakness of Dark Side, is its Dark Side. Sandwich Sweet Tooth between me and Dark Side. Nothing much you can do about that. So the two heavy vehicles I was trying to focus down are in critical health. Cost me my entire health bar, but that is worth it. One down. Sweet Tooth ran away, wisely. Almost killed him. He said one HP and someone else crashed into him. Saves me the trouble. And there's oil slicks everywhere. The, oil slick, the way the oil slick works is hilarious. I don't want it in other games, but the fact that it exists here does some very strange things. It completely removes your traction and your ability to turn. So if you have momentum built up, you will just bounce back and forth like a pinball. Just drive right through everybody. 
I wouldn't mind getting to the recharge station that is still active right now. But it wasn't in the cards. So we'll deal with it like this. That's another way to get a recharge. Except death. Oh, I thought uh, Outlaw actually exploded. Not this time, but soon. There it goes. The slightest graze. Finish it off. And I think the same enemies are still on my case. As were the final two in the last run. That eventually willed me down to nothing. After a ridiculously long time without being able to heal. I thought this man might have been Mr. Grimm. Should have known by the fact that he was moving so slowly. But graphically, there was no way to tell, because, like, the graphics in this game are abysmal. Even in 1995, this was considered severely subpar. All the reviews at the time noted that the graphics were a major, major flaw in the game. Once again, I have very limited opportunity to damage these two. Didn't have much of a choice in the matter but to die. And now I can ram them again. Of course, the recharge stations are back on. It seems like my death reset them, but that has to be coincidence because I assure you they will also reset without you dying. I've gotten it on recording. We've all seen it. Okay. This is the single worst alleyway that we could have pinned Mr. Grimm in, because it has ramps. And the physics go absolutely berserk the second you touch a ramp. Like, gives us the oil effect. Throws our car all over the place. What a nightmare. But, uh, speaking of nightmares... On to Cyberbia. This is the whole reason I'm doing... A Twisted Metal 1 playthrough. I was going to do another head-on playthrough. But... I learned something about Twisted Metal 1, and I'm going to show it off. I'm very excited to show it off. But first, I'm going to need my lives back. Mostly for the sake of convenience, I want to be able to ram enemies. It also seems like load times aren't as burdensome as they are in Twisted Metal 2. So, the whole password system is much more convenient. Later to be overcomplicated. For whatever reason, they could have streamlined it. They did the opposite. This whole outside ring has nothing useful. I think there's one power missile pickup. And also the only turbo missile. Tur turbo, like, charge in the whole level is out on the freeway there. Otherwise, we just can't use turbo. Okay. Oh, I almost got away. Should have used my turbo. I was just talking about it. But what really matters is we deal enough damage in our first life. We don't have to kill everybody. Just soften them up to be finished later. First life is the tenderizer.
We still have every recharge station available. There's like 10 of them in this level. They recharge on different timers. So you want to use them all up in a single region. Then move on to a different region. Use those ones. It's hard to tell which uh, station is going to be part of which region. So you just sort of guess. If you wanted to be a true twist metal expert, you could tear it apart and really figure out the mechanics working behind the scenes. Use them to your advantage. But just bumping into things randomly also gets the job done. So why bother? Spectre using that special. Those ghost missiles will haunt me. As ghosts should, I suppose. Now what I'm going for is out this way. There's a red X, red X, a white X over here that I'm going to ignore. Instead, this is the church. Get in the exact right position. Oh, almost. It was not in the cards this time, but we'll have another opportunity to show it off. And I'm gonna get my health low as soon as possible in order to do so. Right now I was frozen because Darkseid obsessively uses freeze missiles to get you in position for a brutal ramming. And in this game, and in this game only, when you hit the turbo button, costs you five turbo points, but you immediately break the freeze and can drive again. Oh. Everyone decided to kill me. But yeah, you can break out of freezes instantly in this game. Good idea. I don't know why they removed it from future games. Back at Cyberbia. Hardest level in the game. Might as well make it last. Savor that Cyberbia. It is why we're here, after all. Instantly start with Crimson Fury on my case. Like, pointed at me using its special. Hammerhead's not as big a problem for this specific vehicle as it could be. I have no real reasonable chance of getting through here. Did not do nearly enough damage to justify carrying on at this point. Just as I was saying, Hammerhead's not as big a threat as he normally is. That's relatively speaking, because Hammerhead is normally a bigger threat than uh, anything in the game. Wow. I did practice this, and I've never seen enemies kill me so quickly. They're setting new records here. Had to be while I was recording, didn't it? We'll keep at it. I can get through this without losing a single life. So even as far behind as we are right now, it's still doable. This level is very hard, but entirely manageable. I would say that about this entire game, actually. As I have played it much, much, much more than I did at the time I started the LP, I have become more appreciative of its nuances. There are some Actually, very impressive design choices that make the game more fair than it seems at first. And then there's ram damage. That does whatever it feels like. Which sort of levels the playing field. Sometimes it can turn the whole level in your favor, and sometimes it will prevent you from dying when you absolutely should have.
I still don't like the refs, though. There's nothing you can really do to avoid refs. They are omnipresent, constantly firing missiles at you. They shoot you with a missile before you could conceivably have uh, attacked them first. Meaning guaranteed damage. If you have a fast enough vehicle, you can avoid it, but we don't. Okay, so this is the real run. We're gonna get through, and we're going to show off the Easter egg. Same crew. They do not randomize your enemies. Which is a perfectly fine choice, but this is the only game that does that, so... Maybe they regretted it immediately. Get sweet to the love tap, because it certainly didn't do much damage. There we go, he launched me into himself at the cost of a great deal of his own health. Okay, use the plus sign to locate the church. The first church of Siberia. You can technically read on the sign there, even though the texture is no polygons. Spectre doesn't care for my chosen method of worship. How terribly disrespectful. Yeah, in the increased aggression here on hard mode, the enemies do all sorts of weird self-destructive things. In some ways, it is not harder. But in most ways, it is significantly harder. Okay, no one's bothering me. We're at church. We pull ourselves right up here, and there we go. Completely full health. Instantly, in just the slightest kicking up of dust, we are fully recovered. Thanks to the power of Cyberbia. And it's worth noting, this game was programmed by very staunchly religious people who insisted that the live-action cutscenes be cut because they featured women in bikinis. The ultimate sin. All the violence, A-okay. There are actual on-screen gun violence murders depicted in those cutscenes. But those bikinis, that's what crossed the line. And yeah, of course, saying a brief prayer is the ultimate healing tool in Twisted Metal. Definitely not the thing you would expect, based on my experience with the future games in the series at least. I was informed of that fact by Ray Phoenix in the YouTube comments. And this was immediately after I finished recording everything for the Crimson Fury playthrough that I did last month. Which had to be pre-recorded because I was splicing into cutscenes, and also because Crimson Fury is really, really hard to play as, and I couldn't do it live. I'm not that good yet. So, after I had recorded everything for a planned Twisted Metal 1 playthrough, Ray Phoenix randomly left a comment in a very old video from Twisted Metal 1 telling me about that secret that no one has ever told me about, that I'd never heard about from anyone else. I was not prepared. But for a high armor vehicle, that makes a huge difference. It is a full heal. No matter what your health is at, you will be pumped up to max instantly so long as you park in exactly the right spot, right in the middle of the pathway leading up to the church. 
It's so precise, you couldn't reasonably figure it out on your own. That's one of those, uh, things that they print in a magazine. Specifically to sell that magazine. Back when magazines were a thing. When it comes to video game press. Such a time did exist, and that time was 1995. No one feels like fighting for a change. Sweet Tooth is in the LA River. Everyone's in the LA River. And unfortunately, the physics swerved me so that I kept turning after I entered the river. That'll happen. Sweet Tooth leaves, springs everywhere. an appreciator of wackiness. He will not really impede you in any way. He'll just bounce you all over the place. Really, the only purpose it seems to serve is showing off that otherwise useless pickup. The manual says stuff about, like, using the springs to bounce enemies in front of you to then shoot them in the back. Like, turn the tables on them chasing you. And that is profoundly impossible. With the way this game controls, you simply could not do that. The power of the springs isn't even that strong. It only shoots you for like two car lengths, so if you're running away from someone, they are certainly more distance than that away from you, so it doesn't matter anyway. There are one or two spots in the game, I think exactly two spots actually, where there's a power up on top of a tree, and I think the only way to get it is to very carefully place a spring next to that tree, then bounce over it. But I've never successfully done so. So it's all a theory to me. You may be wondering why I wasn't going back to the church there, despite my health being so low. And it's because it's one-time use. You get one prayer, and then God cuts you off. You're on your own from that point. So, yeah, we used our, our one. There's the one. The tree with the homing missile above it. Would be nice to get that homing missile. Not even gonna attempt the strange physics exploit that they expect you to do to get it. Maybe when we're not on hard mode, I'll give that a shot. Okay, Hammerhead has one HP, and now none. But when they die, they spin around in a dramatic fashion. And if you're touching them, you will get caught a little vortex, and each spin will do collision damage to you. I have certainly been killed by dead enemies in that way. Okay, Sweet Tooth just up ahead, behind the concrete barrier. Kind of thought that was the edge of the level, but apparently not. I guess that just leads out to the highway. Ah, Mr. Grimm was actually facing towards me. Waiting in ambush. Could have got me with a giant red head. Glad he didn't. But yeah, I can't get anyone to stop and fight me. We're all just swerving randomly. 
through these vast open streets. Countless suburban blocks. Serving effectively no purpose. Besides to be extremely open. Even with as many enemies as are here, you still have a hard time fighting anybody. Oh, apparently I didn't have anything equipped. There. One more down, at least. Get off the highway, because it's useless. Would be a change of scenery, but... Simply wouldn't be able to do anything out there. Aren't even any good pickups. Now we can't hope to chase Mr. Grimm. His base speed is probably higher than our turbo speed. And you'll be unsurprised to hear that the recharge stations are not coming back online. It's entirely possible that they never will. There's Pit Viper. I knew she was coming from the minimap, but I couldn't see her. She was behind a tree. She survived several specials, unfortunately. Now I'll take a trip down the highway. Revisit Sweet Tooth's corpse, because corpses are persistent in this game. And just relax. There's literally nothing to do right now. We can go accept the inevitable. If we were to set foot back in Cyberbia proper, that is simply what would happen. Mr. Grimm looks like he's heading my way. There he is. He is, as usual, terrible at leading his shot, which has no homing, so he just shot it past me. Okay, everyone's miles behind me. But there are still plenty of refs. There's a health refill. Now I just gotta get there without touching any walls. Or any outlaws. Guess I should have just kept going the other way down the highway. There's of course no shield function in this game. And freeze missiles are very limited. Because you have to actually collect them. They are a specific weapon type. Uh, whoops. Did not input my password. That's kind of essential. For some reason, the pause menu is on the select button, and the start button allows you to change your perspective, bring up the rear view and stuff. Reversed in every single future game. To the way you would expect. The natural way that makes sense. Let's see how the enemies decide to configure themselves this time. The only randomness is their starting location. They all have fixed starting locations, but any enemy can appear in each fixed location. So that's why last time we started with Crimson Fury immediately firing a bunch of shots directly into my back. OK, 
Okay. Big hit on Pit Viper. Wouldn't mind if this worked, but it didn't. <laughs> yeah, we can't rely on the church. As unusable as the recharge stations themselves are, the church is much worse. So much more finicky. Okay. Oil slick to turn this all whole thing into a pinball machine. Yep. Simply cannot find anybody to hurt them. There we go. Dark side keep me frozen. As you do. Gotta go for this again. Before Outlaw gets here. There we go. <laughs> now I'm out of turbo. But I have my health. Let's just call it quits. And leave the, the black box to Crimson Fury. Give this game the good ending it deserves. Okay, now that I'm out of turbo, I cannot break freezes. So they are as irritating as they would be in any other game in the series. And they're gonna ensure that they are very, very irritating. If you touch anything with collision, you take damage and you stick in place for a super long time. And all this is avoidable. It's hard to avoid, because you literally cannot touch anything in the whole game. But it is doable. If you're familiar with that obscure PS1 game, Irritating Stick, where you just can't touch the sides, it's an adaptation of a Japanese game show where you're not allowed to touch the sides. That is very much what this game is like. Don't touch anything at all. With very twitchy controls, you'll be just fine. Irritating Stick is notoriously terrible, but it has its fans, its diehard fans that think the subtle, unique nuances of the game are worth dealing with the fact that it is intended to be irritating, hence the title. Twisted Metal is just kind of irritating because it's sloppily made, thrown together as the first game the studio ever made. With heavy executive meddling. And I did say, it is actually a very good game. Once you get used to it. No getting over that sloppiness, though. Just learn to love it. There's Hammerhead's thing. Normally... Enemies this size are a good thing for Warthog. Because you can crash into them. And then shoot them afterwards, they'll bounce off you. And you'll get a bunch of free shots with your missiles. But Hammerhead will ram into you and then, because of his special, keep going and roll right over you. Dealing tons more ramming damage, taking none himself and putting himself behind you so you cannot shoot him with missiles. Seems tailor-made to uh, combat ramming damage. 
as though they knew. It was a huge problem with the physics engine. They had to do something to counteract it. But also, Hammerhead is still fairly manageable as War Dog. Other vehicles have a much harder time. Crimson Fury's whole special is designed to screw up your steering so that you can't ram into him. At least that seems to be the intention. Definitely works that way in practice. So if it was the intention, good job, you did it. Oh, there he is. Guarding the health refill. Usually the halfway point is a good checkpoint to indicate you're probably gonna make it through. But not on hard mode. Put in the password again, why not? Just be extra sure we're going to Cyberbia. Going there and setting up shop for the long haul. Okay, here's Sweet Tooth. Lock on didn't seem to think so though. I have no weapons, but I almost have a dead Sweet Tooth on my hands. There he goes. Finished by Crimson Fury of all people. I'm the one you want. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm just gonna heal up get a few weapons, and then probably not crush you in one hit, even though that's how collision normally works. Yeah, that did way less damage than you would expect with Warthog hitting Crimson Fury. But you know, it's random. Just gotta roll the die over and over again, and eventually you'll get a one-hit kill from a single impact. It's like they say, it takes so many years to become an overnight success. You only see the big explosive finale that brings a person into the spotlight after so much work behind the scenes. They just get that random thing that gets them the attention that they deserved all along. So if we keep ramming into people, we too will be rewarded with glorious fatal explosions. But we're gonna need some more HP. Surprisingly, seven enemies, and I can't find a single one. Had this problem before, but after the enemy count has dwindled at least a little bit. Unfortunately, I used the recharge station at the church, which is normally how I find the church. I leave that station open as a little landmark. Because the church is in a surprisingly awkward place. Like it's just past the school here. And now it's way too crowded. So we'll go for the sure thing over here. Slowly, with no turbo, ever again. <laughs> yep, landed right on top of that platform. Good job. That's definitely exactly what happened, and the graphics are there to back me up. Hmm. 
Another one down. There's more recharges somewhere. Too much heat around the church. So I can't mess around with any of that. Spectre looking like all the random cars. They're not actually enemies. We gotta go for the church now. Nothing to lose, really. Either Spectre's gonna choose to kill us, or, yeah, Spectre chose to kill us. Pretty sure that was the ghost missile that got me. It also might have been a ref. Can never rule that out. It definitely wasn't Hammerhead, though, because Hammerhead doesn't fire missiles. Hammerhead only tries to ram you, and I think it might get you with free shots. I forget if I've seen that before. I can't rule it out. But it's primarily ramming and machine guns. Okay. Another big one down. Secretly, one of the more dangerous enemies is Spectre. So it's good to see uh, that guy out of here. Scott Campbell, officially fired. He would go on to work on almost every Twisted Metal game. Because that's the name of the series producer. The guy who keeps David Jaffe on some sort of leash. Not a very short leash. But keeps him in the realm of reality occasionally. Music shifts are so awkward here. May as well just be an audible record scratch every time they switch from action music to uh, ambient music. I wouldn't complain, that would be hilarious. The school has a pickup, like, in the middle of its horseshoe, over this way. That's just rear fire missiles. Terrible. They're good on the freeway level. And nowhere else. This should be power missiles. That's the main reason to hop into the LA River. Power missiles are very strong. And there's a van. This one? Let's see. Blow up. Pretty sure that was more power missiles. If we have four, yeah. That was power missiles. Head Vipers was coming our way. Changed her mind. So we'll go for Hammerhead. Hammerhead's a nice big target anyway. Can't rule out that Hammerhead might actually fire missiles on hard difficulty. Probably not. I have observed enough of hard difficulty to, uh, Determine that that's probably not a change in AI. But, you know, anything's possible. I ran out of missiles, so unfortunately I had to finish them off with ramming damage. Which hurt me pretty bad. But I won't have to do that again. Just gotta kill everybody else. Crimson Fury is heading my way, which is excellent news because I left a trail of uh, mines. That should wreck his health. Ignore the traps. 
They're traps both for us to leave in the environment, and if we pick them up, they're a trap. Because they are not worth picking up. That old freeway is calling my name. Because there's nothing much to do in the main area. It would be kind of cool to ram Mr. Grimm. But he's the one who decides whether or not that's possible. Today he says no. I think the refs are going to get me, sooner or later. I miss my machine gun going right through the van. Gotta check if it's one of those vans that has actual things I need. And everyone's converging on my location. Except Crimson Fury, who changed his mind. Weird. This is also the game that introduced machine gun overheating as a mechanic in the game. And that was removed from the rest of the numbered Twisted Metal games. Bizarrely enough. It's very common now to have the machine guns overheat in pretty much all the other games. But for some reason, they didn't like it on the PS1 games. They changed their mind after the first one. Pit Viper is the only one with any real HP to worry about. But uh, Crimson Fury is doing his best Mr. Grimm impression. Just wandering around where I can't really get to him. Okay, he's coming back. And then going over there for some reason. Saved by a tree. Nature itself is trying to make Crimson Fury win. Our little duel. He is the good guy, after all. Oh, wow. Well, that's Cyberbia for you. If you don't perform well enough in the first life, may as well just give up. Okay. What else you got for me, Cyberbia? It's all going to come down to who decides to come my way first, in what configuration, and also how much ramming damage decides to harm them when I ram them. This is an excellent place to crush enemies, because they can't do anything if you get them on their side in the off-ramp tunnel. But it didn't work out that way. Outlaw can continue to harm you, no matter what direction it's facing, with the special. Get more dangerous than a lot of the other enemies. There's Hammerhead. Going right over me. Can't do much about that. And yeah, everyone's teaming up. And yeah, I absolutely have not done enough to justify carrying on. Not even close. Rather than drag that one out, 
we solve it. Now we're ready to see if things work out better. As you can imagine, this took considerably fewer tries in practice. But again, we're recording. Sweet Tooth just took like half his health in a single ram. And then helped me squeeze Dark Side. And I took very little ram damage in that whole melee. Lucky me. Now I'm frozen. Yeah, Dark Side's not gonna let me move. Not happy about the way I came out on top. I also have, like, no weapons, so... Can't do very much here. So hoping for some ram damage to finish that off, but of course not. Not this time. There it goes. Hammerhead's random bumbling seems to have done a lot of the job there. Just see through the entire environment. That's fine. And what have I got? Homie missiles. Those will deal a lot of damage. Sometimes. Maybe the health bar is the inconsistent part. Because it seems like when it transitions from green to red, it pulls like a huge chunk of the health with it. Even if it's a small hit, that does that transition from green to red, or green to yellow. I don't know, that's a theory. <laughs> that the health bar represents random health values. That plus sign is the church. But I'm not going to get to the church, so I'll just take the plus sign. Or the X, really, but... Depending on how you tilt your head, it'll be a plus sign. I've been playing this whole game with my head tilted 45 degrees. And that's why I've been playing so poorly, is my excuse. We have done well enough for a first life, all things considered. But obviously more would be better, and we just got some more. It was very costly though. That corpse got stuck inside my vehicle for quite a while there. Outlaw cannot zap us when there are other enemies bound, because it'll zap the other enemies instead. That's one instance where you actually want to get a big group of people around you. Mr. Grimm taking a lap. Meanwhile, we'll go for this Easter egg. What would I have done without this Easter egg? But performed so much worse. But right now, no one wants to fight. Ah, Hammerhead does. And definitely froze me there. So there we go. I didn't see the missile but I saw the after effects, so it must have been 
an actual missile shot by Hammerhead. A non-standard missile, but a missile nonetheless. One last ram into Crimson Fury. And now we go into cleanup mode. Crimson Fury not leaving the LA River, so you can stay there for all I care. Hammerhead's the last big pinata we gotta beat down for quite a while. It's coming my way. Wish she would die. And that tiny sliver represents a tremendous amount of HP. Hammerhead is so imbalanced. Warthog is also incredibly imbalanced. This is one of the more poorly balanced games in a series where almost every game is very poorly balanced. Twisted Metal 2 has a beat though. Twisted Metal 2 has the worst balance in the whole series. And it's still one of, if not the best game, so... That ultimately doesn't, uh, break any deals. Imbalance can be fun. Uh... This is just coming in from nowhere. As far as I can tell. Okay, we gotta pile up. Nobody stayed stuck for very long, though. It sounded like somebody exploded. I don't remember if I was at 4-4 four, four enemy count. But maybe. Maybe someone just died. Okay. Someone definitely died there, and there. So now, only two left. Now I have two lives remaining. No recharges to deal with. Once again, tap Crimson Fury and then immediately explode. It should take so much more damage from ramming. I've seen it happen. Like that. All that's left is Mr. Grimm. Where could he be? I don't really want to see him right now. I don't have any weapons. Holy missile, and there's a power missile behind one of these pillars. This one. That's roughly enough firepower. One more homie missile will guarantee it. Take that, Crazy Joe. Actual character name. And another power missile, why not? Keeps getting bounced into the sky. He could at any moment hit me with his special. And that would be bad. And he could also just take no damage from ramming. At his discretion. There he finally goes. Bizarrely difficult fight against Mr. Grimm. Can't explain it, but it's over. On to the rooftops. I'm ready for anything. Nothing can stop me now.
yeah, gonna need full lives. <laughs> Just for safety, if nothing else. Although, Minion is a total bastard. Even more so than on normal difficulty. So let's just do the entire tournament again, what do you say? Now there are ways to uh, get back where we just were. Let's try them now. Excellent. On to the rooftops, the final battle. Roadkill and Spectre we can handle. Hopefully. Depending on how ram damage decides to work out. I'm a broken record. The most important thing is breaking the pyramid. It's surprisingly difficult. We could be here a while. Okay, we weren't. That's lucky. So we'll grab these pickups, mostly so that they respawn later. I'm out of machine gun bullets. And the enemies are here throwing off my steering. So I couldn't thread the needle and get through this little hallway. But now I can. Use just a little bit of turbo at the very end to ensure I don't fall and die. I've never seen it happen, but with a slower vehicle, you can sometimes not have enough momentum to get between rooftops, and that is an instant death. We also want to get over here, drop the crate, Open it up. And now we are incredibly well armed. In addition to just being a plain old powerful car. Close one. Okay, one down. Spectre's guarding the exit. Ooh, stuck on the edge. Thanks to bad collision. That's a problem that persists through the entire PS1 library of Twisted Metal games. If you ever touch the edge, like the corner, where two surfaces meet, you will get stuck there. That was an interesting placement for Roadkill's corpse. Wasn't expecting it. And neither was Spectre. I mean, how could you? Oh, Hammerhead's here. I'll let them crash into one another. Because there's not enough space in the world for Hammerhead and anybody else. Oh. We can definitely finish Spectre. Then use whatever's left over. Take out Hammerhead. The only useful items in this whole level are the three in here and the two in the crate that you knocked down. And there's one fire missile pickup over on the platform near the the pyramid. Otherwise, you just have no weapons to work with this whole level. It's your special and ramming damage. We are among the few vehicles that has adequate special and adequate ramming damage. Spectre has exploded possibly missed the jump and fallen off the map. 
But one way or another, it's dead. And we need to get rid of Hammerhead. And it's taking a lot of shots. Because it's Hammerhead. That's out of there. Made it to the final round. Prepare to battle Minion. Last year's Twisted Metal winner. And we'll just pretend we don't know any of the things that we saw in the last month's playthrough. Because they aren't in the actual game. But there was a lot of lore around Minion. Fully contradicted by future games, so... Definitely non-canon. But interesting. Now backing up, you'll note, is very awkward. If you have any forward momentum, which is to say your speedometer in the corner there, the red number that's ticking up, if that is a positive value at all, and you press your accelerator or your turbo or anything, you will move forward. This is a huge problem when you are trying to move backwards, as I was there in order to get around the edge of this ramp. I simply could not do so because my vehicle had too much forward momentum and I could not counteract it. So I have to move the tiniest bit backwards, get myself up this ramp. It's an irritating thing. It does balance the bigger vehicles. Probably unintentionally. Bullying minions straight off the edge. Because we are a big enough vehicle to do that. Now, get him stuck in this cycle where he can't do anything. Just repeatedly ram him over the edge. Now, I only have the one special at this point. It's not going to do too much. But we'll ram him off again. Maybe even get him stuck on the edge. Which would keep him busy for a while, but it didn't. Let's see what's in the pit. Literally nothing. Random respawn times. Nothing over here. But we regenerated several specials in the meanwhile. Might have also seen him zap me with lightning through the floor because he has Outlaw Special and we'll use it at its maximum distance to do some really cheap stuff. <laughs> Bullying him is very fun. I will say that. But it's not going to kill him. Not unless we get some actual missiles. Any over here? Of course not. We could try and bully him off of the edge into the pit. We've got enough ramming power to do it, but extremely risky. We have two more specials. Not much else to work with, but We'll take what we got. He has no choice. He'll come up here eventually. He got backed up by the refs. Cheap. But I was playing cheap, so what can you expect? That's all well and good. This is, of course considerably easier than Siberia. Why would you want the final level to be harder than the penultimate level? Of course you would not. Should 
She just need to perform better on this trio. And it's surprisingly badly dealing with them. We do unfortunately have to waste our entire inventory. Opening this up. And most of our turbo. But once it's open, we're all set. We'll just excuse ourselves from that area. Once we're over here, we break down the crate. We are ready to begin this level. Wouldn't mind having some more arms, though. Just ram Spectre on out of here. And head to the Pyramid Pit. Very well placed oil slick. I mean, it could be better placed, because there are instant falling death traps here, but... It did enough. Having Hammerhead down here is bad news. Yeah, he stopped me dead in my tracks with that special of his. And he just stays on your case. Even as slow as he is. Sheer persistence gets him to you every time. But that is fine. We did do so much damage to everybody. This is still a good position to be in. Can't really give chase, though, because we're slow. So we're going to need missiles. There's missiles in here. Spectre, as usual, faring surprisingly well against ramming damage until that moment. One down. Everyone's well into the red. Could wait for them to come to me, but they don't seem to want to do that. We might have items down here. One item. They're all collected at exactly the same time. So it makes zero sense that only one would have respawned. But I did expect only one to have respawned. That just seems to happen. Things that make no sense. Definitely hit me with a freeze missile. If you're keeping count at home, that can clearly happen. Okay, finished him by tapping him on the bumper. And I should be able to do the same with roadkill. Bad. Oh, what? <laughs> the collision in this game is flawless and the most masterful programming in the history of video games. Make absolutely no mistake. Final round again. Minion starts in a super awkward spot. Which I normally don't even see, because I'm so far away from there when I finish the fight. He goes right for a distant rooftop where I do most of my combat. And seems to just be hanging out there. I don't have an exit strategy to get to him. Huh? 
Where's he at? I was kind of worried I would uh, swerve right off the edge. Didn't end up mattering though. Because it is minion. Minion is obscenely overpowered in this game. Every game, really. Started a trend in the series of the final boss being far too much. It kind of renders the entire rest of the game pointless to have the conclusion be such a gigantic difficulty spike. Like, effectively, the beginning levels aren't even the same game as the final levels. They don't compare in any reasonable way. With such extreme shifts in difficulty, it just sort of trivializes more than half of the game. Makes it just sort of pointless busy work. I've seen several games where late game difficulty makes absolutely no sense compared to early game difficulty. Twisted Metal 1 is definitely an extreme example of that. Okay, there's Minion. We'll get him with whatever dirty tricks we have available. Missed with the ram. You never want to face him head on. Like, with him facing directly towards you. If you're in his eye line, you are susceptible to uh, five different specials at the same time? Something like that? I've said it was every special in the game. It's merely most specials fired simultaneously. That includes thumpers, which can deal the vast majority of your health bar all at once. Took a bit of a risk actually trying to engage him in fair combat. This was the right answer. Got two fire, or two power missiles, three fire missiles. With persistence, he made it onto our platform. I was just kind of hanging out there. But we traded spaces. I still don't have enough firepower to finish him. Very close. If the refs don't decide to do me in, we're all set. Also, I was worried that he might uh, fire lightning through the floor. lucked out and that didn't happen. Just gonna keep a bit of distance so he doesn't lightning me as he goes up the ramp. And then he dies. We... We win. <laughs> Glorious. Cheap, but effective. You're the winner of the competition, and are granted an audience with Calypso, the creator of the Twisted Metal Contest. We'll compare and contrast how this measures up to the uh, live-action cutscene that was Minion's ending originally. Instead, we get uh, this. As you speed into his underground garage, you spot him, 
surrounded by bodyguards and seated on a throne of broken car parts. His face is burnt beyond recognition. His smile is hideous. He speaks. As you know, I shall now grant you any prize you request. That much is identical between all endings, but this part is uh, unique. I won your contest, you shout in a gruff voice. Now give me my prize. Give me the box. Calypso smiles and tosses you a heavy iron box. It is a flight recorder box from a downed aircraft. Listening to the recording on the box, you now know why the government sent you to get it. It contains evidence that an otherworldly craft shot down the airliner. Evidence that we are not alone. As you speed off into the LA night, you are content, happy that the government will get what it is what is rightfully theirs. You also feel good knowing that the people of the USA can sleep tight tonight, kept in the dark about things they are not yet ready to know about. So, he actually gets the box in the live action version. He doesn't. He requests it, and uh, then he threatens Calypso. Calypso reveals that Calypso has already slain the strike force that was set in preemptively to kill him. And uh, when that is revealed, uh, Warthog just backs out in horror. It is presumed that the box is not given to the public, so effectively it is kept under wraps. So the result is the same, but in this game it is confirmed unequivocally. No one will ever know, and this must be the canon ending because Aliens don't really come up again, not until the post-apocalypse of 2008 in a non-canon game of Twisted Metal 3. So that's Twisted Metal and all its weirdness and jankiness. I love it, and I'm probably never going to play hard mode again, because it is hard. We'll take a short break from this game not play it at all next month, and then come back with, uh, Pit Viper. I'm sure everyone's thrilled about that. A character no one's ever heard of. Lance Simcoe is a good portrayal of Calypso, but taken over in the next game by Mel McMurrin and bested in every single way. Especially because Lance Simcoe has no voice in the canon game. But his acting in the non-canon FMV shots, pretty solid. Entertaining, at least. Now to just enjoy many more names. Many of which would continue to work on all of the future games. And be referenced throughout. Yep, all kinds of familiar faces. Jennifer 14 is partially the name of the driver of Pit Viper. Just keep that in mind. I believe the character in the game is Angela 14. But we'll see soon enough. And that could have gone a whole lot better, the whole playthrough. I'm actually surprised how badly Cyberia went, but... That happens when you try to record. Keep that in mind, if you think you're good at a video game. You don't know until you've tried to record yourself. Even without commentary when I record, I perform dramatically worse than I do. And then, even worse than that, when I'm doing commentary at the same time. Still, no excuse. Should have done better. On Cyberbia, everything else went perfectly fine. And that's the end. Twisted Metal, 1995. In case you forgot what you played. But, we beat the game on hard mode, 
So that's not the end. This is what the elite few saw when they finally completed the game. Helicopter view. A cheat code and preparation for the fight of your life. Five enemies chucked into the arena level for absolute chaos. Yep, just a random challenge. The exact wording, prepare for the fight of your life, appears on screen in Twisted Metal Head On when you choose the um, Tower Tooth Challenge. It also claims to be the fight of your life. And uh, similar to this, it is not actually that difficult. I'm definitely not going to win here, but only because I came in with only one life. Yeah. Underprepared. But it is still not the fight of your life by any means. So much so, I'm going to take one more crack at it, and then if I fail again, that'll be that. Because there is a password that gets us right into it. It is... that. Now for the fight of our life, again. This time it's the fight of our lives. Two Sweet Tooths, I've never seen that. That's a fantastic way to end this. With a multi-Sweet Tooth brawl. That should be true madness in the best possible way. I suspect one of them might be invisible. <laughs> yeah. Something exploded. One of the enemies is dead. This is super glitched out. Okay, there's Sweet Tooth's corpse. And just avoid where there should be another Sweet Tooth. <laughs> Which doesn't appear to be taking damage no matter what happens. Yeah, we made Ultra Sweet Tooth accidentally. Did we stumble into the Dark World somehow? I did say this would be true madness. And indeed. I do suspect that this is why there are so many pickups here in this first level. It's also useful for uh, grinding up pickups that you'll need when you get into the actual main game. But for the most part, none of these pickups are the sort of thing you would bother to get when you play the arena level against a single enemy. So when there's five, you actually do get to use them. So that was, indeed, some dirty dancing against Sweet Tooth, who double teamed up on me and uh, made a effectively unwinnable situation. Perhaps it was winnable. I was so taken off guard that uh, I couldn't even react properly. Wild stuff. Never seen anything quite like that. But that is the end of the run. I did say I was not going to take another crack at it. Even though at this point, anything could happen. It could be all Sweet Tooth next time. <laughs> Who's to say? We'll never know. I am Fiendly, and I thank you for watching Twisted Monday.